Welcome, I'm Therese Calvert from Lost in Paper and I'm here with my same but different Christmas card series for 2023. I'm kicking it off with some fun critter cards and I'm also going to show you a really quick tip on how to add some easy shading using alcohol markers. Now throughout my series I will be using products that I love and adore and not all of them are available anymore but I will link what I can but I do encourage you to look at your stash and what you have and how you're inspired and maybe try and switch it up using what you have. If you have any questions don't hesitate to reach me through the comments below or at my blog. We've got lots to do so we better get started. So what I've done here is I've kind of planned it in my head what I want to do for my cards today and I've grabbed a few critter stamps that are inspiring me. Not all of them are holiday based, not all of them are Christmas but you'll see why in just a moment that doesn't matter. I like to try and batch things out so if I've got a bit of a plan in my head that means it's going to save me time down the track because I can do all my stamping at once and all my colouring at once. And that brings me to my cheats way of adding shading and it works particularly well on images like this. So I've got a base of colour that I'm laying down and then I've got uh, another colour which is very similar but a shade darker and what I'm doing here is simply drawing a line or a shadow line not coming back in and shading it out or blending it out. It is a really cute way to add some really simple quick easy shading especially on images like this it suits them perfectly. Because I'm leaving the chest of the penguins white then I can just simply come in and add my shading direct and leave the other white space just as the natural cardstock color. I did the same with the star and also the antlers on the little penguin's head. So a really simple shading, just a really quick way to add some easy colour, especially if you're not confident to do a lot of blending. I just thought I'd quickly share that with you today. Now I do have the um, stamps left in the lid of the Misty and after I've done all my colouring what I like to do is come back in and re-stamp them using a black pigment ink and this is just going to crisp up the edges of the images that I've stamped. Now I have also got uh, coordinating dies for most of these images but you can certainly fussy cut them. I had to fussy cut a couple of them today uh, including the little fox image here. <laughs> You see me, I do try and um, push him out of the, but there's no die cut is there. Right, so once I've batched out all my stamping, colouring and cutting, I'm onto my first technique and it is to create a die cut background. I decided to use some snowflakes today and you can use whatever kind of pattern you want. You could use a geometric pattern. If you've got a cover die that would work really well as well. You could even stamp a snowflake background if you've got some snowflake stamps. I did go ahead and add some double sided A4 adhesive sheets to the back of my cardstock. So basically when I die cut all of these snowflakes out from some 80 pound Nina they became stickers which made creating the background really easy. I've added some Aqua Sky cardstock to the front of the card and I can simply just move my snowflakes around till I'm kind of happy with the placement of them and then release the adhesive like the release paper from the back and just sort of scatter them around on the front of the card. I like to flip the cardstock over and use some long scissors to actually cut away the excess of the snowflakes and then I can use little bits and pieces of them to fill in the gaps that I've got happening around the edge of the card. Some people prefer to use a guillotine to cut away the edges. I'm not very good with guillotines. I haven't mastered them but I hear they're very good. <laughs> I've added a sentiment which I've popped up on the front of the card and I've also fussy cut my little fox from Penny Black and popped him up on the front of the card as well. I will link everything that's still available in the description below but also there'll be a lot more details and information at my blog. Alright so I'm on to the second design now and I first just want to show you that 
to line up a sentiment, you can simply add a piece of acetate onto the front of your card, stamp out the image, and make sure you're happy with it before you stamp it. But this technique is one of my favorites. You can make any image, pretty much any critter image, into a holiday card or a Christmas card design simply by adding like a Santa hat or some baubles, maybe earrings as baubles. You could add some Christmas lights. There are so many different ways to do this. I kept this one very clean and simple and I thought it'd be fun to have a pink flamingo Santa having a drink to celebrate Christmas today. <laughs> Think of the possibilities. You could make a Santa bear or a Santa cat. It doesn't have to be a Christmas set. Have a look at your stash. All right, so now I'm on to my third idea. And this time I'm going to be creating a scene. Now this is going to be a very simple scene. I've die cut a tiny dots background out of some green cardstock. And I'm layering up a falala here because I probably want to send this through the post and I don't want it to be squished. So I've actually got four layers of the Falala with some 110 pound Nina. So it's a nice thick cardstock. I added a few extra la 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 la's because <laughs> why not? And then I'm using my perfect align tool to make sure that I've centered my panel perfectly on the front of the card because I did cut that out with a one of the A2 layer dies from Waffle Flower, and that works really well with these align tools. So my scene needed a few little trees, and I you could easily just cut some triangles yourself, or die cut or stamp some trees and cut them out if that's what you've got. And then I could add the sentiment to the front of the card, which I did with some liquid glue because it is, like I said, quite thick. And for the rest of my scene, I've added the sleigh with some presents and a singing dog. <laughs> His name's Patch, by the way. Can you tell why? But there are so many ways that you can create a scene. It doesn't have to be a sleigh. It could be a Santa bag uh, with a Christmas tree in the background and a fireplace. It could even be a reindeer flying over the roof of a house with a stars and a moon in the background and of course you can color these images however you want if you prefer to do water coloring or pencil coloring go for it all right so we're on to our fourth idea and i'm going to be creating a stripy background this is always a fun way you can add any images that you have and if you choose colors that make you happy it is going to make you smile i've added some double-sided adhesive to a piece of 80 pound Nina cardstock and I had a die cut so I did actually use that to cut all my colors out but you can easily use a paper trimmer to cut some strips it doesn't have to be perfect in the width I often do them in varying widths because I think that looks really cute too I've stamped and colored one of these cute penny black hedgehogs one thing I want to know is you don't have to always use the whole stamp like this critter image actually has the four different critters in it. it's an older set from Penny Black and I just wanted to use the hedgehog which I did fussy cut out as well. I've cut down my stripe panel and I'm using my perfect align tool again to make sure that that's lined up straight on the front of my card even though I've popped it up on some foam fun foam that works as well. I've added just a simple sentiment which is going to sit below the critter and then popped up the critter and added some rhinestones to the little wreath here. You do or don't have to do all the layers. I like to add dimension to my cards but if you are concerned about postage just simply adhere your images and your backgrounds directly to the card front. You could also use design paper, like striped design paper, if you find that would be easier to get a similar look. And it's a lot of fun. What a cute little hedgehog. These are my fa one of my favorite images from Penny Black, these little hedgehogs. We don't have hedgehogs in Australia. All right, so now we're on to the final idea, and this is probably my favorite one. We're gonna stack them up, yes. <laughs> 
we're going to stack up our images onto the front of the card. And these cute little penguins were perfect for this because they kind of, to me, they look like they ended up creating the shape of a Christmas tree. But it has that humour element because he's now standing on the head of the other two little penguins. But obviously they're not going to be hurt. <laughs> you can do this with different kinds of images as well. You don't have to use the same animal. I've actually got a stamp that has multiple different animals standing on top of each other. I've also got stamps that are all in one, but they actually have all the animals layered up to be in the shape of a Christmas tree. So there are actually stamps made like this, but if you check out your own stash of critter stamps, you probably have something that you could use and you could even layer up um, presents and then put a critter sitting on top. It doesn't have to be all different animals. So let's go through all of our designs today. Number one, we did a die cut background with some snowflakes. The next one was turning any critter into a Christmas critter. And that's really easy in this example with a Santa hat. And then I created a scene with a sled and patch, the dog. Then we've got a bright, fun striped background with our hedgie. And finally, we stacked them up. And these are those cute penguins that just stole my heart today. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below which card is your favorite today and if you are going to try any of these techniques. And if you do, I'd love you to share them with me. Now hang around because I've got some more inspiration from the last two years, my first in the video series for Christmas designs, and I look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye. <laughs>